I have all the news about NBA 2K25. I'm talking everything my career. Badges, badge perks, badge elevators, takeovers, cap breakers, and even the entire builder. So drop a like for more early info and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you see stuff like this even earlier. And let's get into everything 2K25 because we are about to do a complete breakdown so you guys can understand everything fully a month ahead of NBA 2K25. So let's get into it. What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Henry, aka Double H, back at it with yet another banger and actually our first 2K25 video. Guys, I cannot wait to present you guys the news first. I have literally everything my player builder related, everything I talked about in the intro. We're just going to get straight into it. We're not going to waste any time. So subscribe to the channel for me not wasting any time. Let's go ahead and get into the blog. So we're going to read over a bunch of that. At certain points, we'll pause and talk about stuff. We will also show some actual 2K25 screenshots at certain certain points as well so here we go the my player builder this is all what we want to know first every my career starts with building your my player which is possibly the most integral moment on your journey to creating a legacy for yourself we understand the importance of the process so we spend a good deal of time ensuring you have the tools necessary to build just the right player for you nba 2k25's my player builder offers an array of customizations in the structure and archetype of your my player with over a hundred new possible archetypes you can create when you enter your my player builder you'll have the option to choose from all right so before we move on a hundred new archetypes is actually kind of crazy now the only thing that worries me about that is am i going to be able to see a build name or when i load into a game am i going to be able to see that build name and actually know what i'm going up against because if you guys remember in like 2k19 2k20 if you're playing a two-way slashing playmaker you know exactly what you're playing against 2k19 if you're playing a playmaking shot creator you know exactly what you're getting but in 2k23 2k24 you, know, you play an inside out score you don't really know what that is. Now, the good thing is that they added like the little attribute screen that you could see in the beginning to see their top attributes and even like some of their three point percentages, field goal percentage and that stuff. But to be honest, we, we need a little more info. Like if anything, I need to see their worst stats as well. Like I feel like the, a, a player having a 25 perimeter defense is just important for me to know as if they have a 99 three-pointer, you know, I want to take advantage of their weaknesses. So yeah, if I don't know what their build is just off their build name, then we need more info in that startup screen. Anyways, create your own build. Whether you're a build maker veteran who has mastered the My Player Builder or just looking to experiment and create a unique build, anyone can use the world-class My Player Builder to create from scratch. You can choose your position and measurements and meticulously adjust your individual attribute potential while all while seeing how these choices will affect the various benefits you can eventually be equipped with. All right, so this basically confirms the free form builder once again where like you can kind of just customly upgrade your attributes so for anyone that was begging for double archetypes or pie charts to come back for whatever reason i don't know why <laughs> i mean we're not we shouldn't be going backwards i don't agree with any of those takes at all but yeah we're not getting that we're getting the free form builder again which i think is a good thing i think 2k24 is the best free form builder we've seen yet and i think hopefully it's going to improve as the years goes on like it has been all right getting into the next section community builds First introduced in NBA 2K24, community builds spotlight creations from standout players in the community that you could use as a blueprint to build your my player to compete at the highest levels. We saw 35 awesome templates last year from some of your favorite build makers, and this year we'll be adding brand new builds from new and returning build makers. The first community builds will be available in season two, with more becoming available each season. Through each of these my player builder paths, you'll have access to more information than never before. If you want to nerd out and dig deeper, you can preview all the benefits you qualify for for incoming badges, takeovers, and the new takeover system and signature animation. Once you have a my player build you like, we suggest taking it for a spin in the build tester. First, you'll be presented with the equip screen when you could equip all signature animations your build has the potential to unlock and other customization options like jump shots and dunk packages participate in 3v3 or 5v5 games or play the new freestyle practice option to experiment without teammates or opponents to hone your skills we hope these improvements provide a better experience for new gen players in this city this year's my player builder is designed to cater to different play styles and strategic preferences whether you are creating your my player from scratch or leveraging community wisdom each option in 2k25 is crafted to fit your style oh my god this is really good news so let me explain a couple of things and why that is very good so first of all they have mentioned the takeover system that there's a new takeover system i will get into that later i guess but this my player tester if you guys remember in 2k23 2k24 the my player tester is like completely useless you don't have any badges in there you get random animations so you don't even know what you're using and we have no clue what the difficulty is on either so it's literally useless you cannot actually see how good your build can be 
in that tester. But with this, this is perfect. They're talking about you can go in freestyle. So like some kind of my core area where you can just dribble around, equip any dribble moves you want as your max potential 99 overall build. That's insane. Dunk packages. I mean, that this is perfect. And then you could also still go in the 3v3 and 5v5 mode. So just imagine making your build, putting the potential to 99 and testing it testing any animation it unlocks maybe there's an animation that you put up in the attribute screen that you want to test in there or maybe there's some dunk packages you want to test maybe you want to see how fast this build is moving because you put the speed up a little more or maybe there's a certain jump shot that that build unlocks that you want to test out in the freestyle mode this is just a quality of life improvement and honestly this is going to save hundreds if not thousands hundreds of thousands of people money in the builder because now you can actually see what your build is going to be like when you max it out this is something that i was asking for and thankfully we received this is a massive upgrade to the builder probably the best upgrade we could have gotten to be honest obviously they talked about the community builders i had a community build hopefully i'll have one again i know y'all liked my community build uh it came out like what in the early seasons it was a fire build so that's cool i think those are used way more than the nba template builds which i don't know if the nba templates are returning because they didn't talk about that in here and the one last thing i'll say on that little paragraph that, that they wrote there is it's it talked about how the my player builder this year is designed for different play styles and strategic preferences i hope that's true because you know there's a lot of good 2ks where there was a lot of play styles that were really effective at a high and low level i feel like 2k19 and 2k20 we saw tons of different archetypes being used at a high level which means they can be used at all levels if they're used at the highest level and i feel like we slowly saw that completely disappear in 2k21 2k22 and 2k23 and improved it did improve a little bit in 2k24 but hopefully it goes back to that 2k19 2k20 where if you're playing stage twos or some kind of twos at the highest level for example the 2v2 court right you're gonna see a post lock in 2k19 you're gonna see a play shot stretch you're gonna see a stretch stretch you're gonna see a lock lock you're gonna see a lock rim you're gonna see a play shot lock you're gonna see a bunch of different lineups and archetypes used and strategies used to win against other great players so hopefully when they say that, that that's actually true because i feel like they they can say stuff like that but is it actually gonna happen we don't really know all right on to the next one attribute refresh and nba 2k25 re refreshed a handful of physical attributes as well as how you earn stamina there are now five physical attributes in the my player builder speed with ball in the playmaking category speed agility strength and vertical stamina is now earned through gatorade gym workouts each my player starts off with an 85 stamina attribute rating doing a workout adds two stamina attribute points regardless of your workout result and you can do four workouts each week once any of your my player reaches a 99 stamina attribute rating it is permanent as an added bonus for hitting the gym if you get at least three stars on all four weekly workouts you will receive a temporary turbo meter boost and unlock a body type for your my player once you have done all 12 unique workouts in the gatorade gym you will unlock workout warrior which gives you 99 stamina a permanent turbo meter boost and all of your unlocked body types across all new and existing saves. And then basically 24, the acceleration attribute determined your dribble launching and off ball movement. In contrast, NBA 2K25 dribble launching is now determined solely by the speed with ball attribute while defensive lateral movement off ball launches and off ball cutoffs are determined by a new attribute called agility. All right, so a lot of info here to go over. So first of all, they're talking about the physical attributes. Like, so basically at the bottom of the builder where there's like speed and all that stuff, they're saying speed with ball, but it's going to be in the claiming category, speed, agility, strength, and vertical are your physical attributes. So this means stamina is out of the builder. So everyone is going to start with an 85 stamina, no matter how you make your build. That's going to be interesting how that affects builds, because now, since I don't have to upgrade stamina, is that going to give me extra or less attributes not only that but if y'all noticed acceleration is also gone from the builder so acceleration stamina completely gone from the builder but they added in agility so once again are we gonna have more attributes to work with since we're doing a little two for one trade right there or is it gonna be balanced off like how is that gonna work is the main question I'd have there. Now they did talk about how you have to earn your stamina with the gym workouts and they still are not giving us the option like we had in the old days to choose your body type in the builder. Now I know a lot of people are gonna have issues with that. They're not gonna like that. But the good thing is 
that we only have to go through those workouts once and once we do do that we get them on all the builds so that's just a quality of life thing because in 2k24 like if you wanted burly on all your builds like you had to wait like four weeks every time you made a new build and then do all your workouts so that was just a pain uh thank god that is not a thing in 2k25 with these body types and with this stamina thing so at least the quality of life is there with that little thing i guess and I guess you're really gonna have to, you know, actually put in the work to get your stamina or your body type to get that kind of advantage. You don't just get that off rip. So that'll be, I mean, I guess uh, it's 50-50. It's some people are gonna like that. Some people are not gonna like that, but once you get it, it, it's not gonna be an issue. But something that I think is the most important thing in this paragraph is how they talked about dribble launching is determined solely by speed with ball. And that defensive stuff is determined by your agility because there was a huge confusion in 2k24 whether or not speed or excel or perimeter affected how fast you move laterally on defense and then there was a huge confusion on whether it was speed with ball or just speed booster badge or acceleration made you move faster with speed boosting and everyone would have a debate about it so now it looks like 2k is actually just telling us what it's going to affect are they right about that i'm hopefully because you know what i mean if they're wrong about that people are gonna have an issue with that after they upgrade their build and it turned out to be false but i'm hoping this information is added into the builder at some point it doesn't seem like you know if they're telling us here I don't know if that info is going to be actually built in the builder because every attribute should tell you exactly what it does in 2k terms you know what i mean but that is key information when y'all are making your builds so just remember defensive lateral movements off ball launches and off ball cutoffs just like they talked about in that gameplay update is uh all determined by your agility stats so that's a new stat so agility is going to be huge for lockdowns people that want to play defense or move fast on defense and then speed with ball is for dribble launching and like accelerating with the ball in your hand i'm guessing so that's key information for if what kind of build you want to make in 2k25 now it's time to get to the craziest screenshot of the video this is a builder screenshot from 2k25 so after analyzing this a little bit you know obviously we have you know the colors are a little different for some of these i also notice immediately that the color coordination with the actual attributes is different so rebounding is purple usually rebounding is just built in with defense but now it's like it's completely own thing it's purple instead of red with the defense so that's interesting we also noticed that acceleration and stamina is gone like i said uh you know a couple minutes ago and we do see that agility in there it is weird seeing uh acceleration and stamina gone from the building that is kind of weird to look at playmaking still has the same stuff uh you know the defense and rebounding same attributes they didn't add a uh, lateral quickness to there that's going to be an agility there's no moving shot mid-range or moving shot three-pointer like old 2ks they're keeping it mid-range and three-pointer and yeah everything else looks pretty similar in the actual attribute menu so i'm sure that kind of info is going to be under every stat you hover over the builder so that's a w another thing we notice is this is a 6-2 point guard uh with 184 pounds 6-9 wingspan and it is at a 98 overall all right so i paused the recording a little bit to go into the 2k24 builder to try to recreate this build as well and there's a lot of things i'm noticing so first off this is what i have on my screen so far we went 6-2 point guard 184 pounds 6-9 wingspan now obviously it's gonna be a little weird because stamina is in here acceleration is in here while stamina is not in that builder and acceleration is agility in that builder uh but something i'm noticing right is the 98 ball handle perfectly aligns with the 89 excel it automatically upgraded that so that's interesting um along with the speed of ball so it's a ball handle directly affects speed probably the exact same way, way it does in 2k24 another thing i'm noticing is that when i went to 87 dunk and 85 layup it automatically put the close shot as a 60 and it didn't upgrade the standing dunk and post control at all so i don't know if whoever took this screenshot from 2k literally went up on the close shot standing dunk and post control on purpose um i don't know why they would do that because it is a 6-2 point guard but then again they only have an 82 ball or 82 three-pointer on this 6-2 uh, point guard so it's kind of just a bad build i don't know who is making this build but despite that yeah I, I don't know if they purposely upgraded these the standing dunk to a 34 and the post control to a 38 or if that's actually affected by the dunk in the layup this year but i did notice that not only that but the strength is more affected by driving dunk in 2k24 than it is in 2k25 because if i lower this 
my dunk goes down to an 86. But on that screenshot, he's a 38 strength and an 87 dunk. So that's interesting to note. Not only that, but there's just not enough attributes to make this build. So they either gave us more attributes in the actual 2K25 builder, or B, they buffed shorter builds to get more attributes. Because you guys know in this build, like six sixes, six sevens get a lot of attributes, six eights, but like shorter builds don't get as much attributes. Because yeah, even though I have stamina here, dude, stamina is super cheap. Like there's no way me having a 59 stamina is me getting a minus eight Excel or slash agility than that 2K25 screenshot has with no block compared to his 30 block, a 30, no defense rebound compared to his 38 defensive rebound, no steal compared to that 71 steal, no perimeter defense outside of the 59 they automatically upgraded compared to 73, no interior compared to its 28, exact playmaking and shooting stats, no post control compared to its 38, no standing done compared to its 34, and only a 60 post control compared to its 72. So you gotta get more attributes in the 2K25 builder, at least on a 6-2 point guard, 100%. Now, another thing that we that I noticed, besides obviously the build itself, the attribute screen, the details on like what attribute you're hovering over, let's take our attention over to the elephant in the room here with a couple things. First, let's start with the badge that it's hovering over on the right. That badge is red. And that badge is called Lightning Launch. Speeds up launches when attacking from the perimeter. And then we look at the bottom and it says 68 speed of ball gives you bronze lightning launch. 75 is silver. 86, I think that, yeah, 86 is gold. 91 is Hall of Fame. And 94 is red. So there is a new badge tier in 2K25. We have not seen this since what? 2k 17 they haven't added new that's the last time we saw new batch tiers or they added hall of fame badges in 2k 17 this is something that we have not seen them do in eight years guys add another badge tier i don't know what this is called we'll probably we're gonna find out in this video but what i'm worried about is why is it only a 94 speed with ball is that the max you can get because this is the max the, the 94 speed with ball is the max on this 62 build which is you know, decent weight, not anything heavy. So can you go past 94 speed of ball? Because if you can go past 94 speed of ball on a build, then this like whatever red tier should be the highest possible because it's got to be OP, right? I mean, it's higher than Hall of Fame. So, I mean, that is something interesting to look at. But yeah, overall, I like how this builder is set up. It's literally just the 2K24 builder, but with, you know, upgrades, in my opinion, I think they're just making it better. I, I think the freeform builder is what gives you the best customization. I think them keep continuing to upgrade it like they are here as what it looks like. I think this is a W, 100%, but we got to see what we got to just look at the more some more news to figure out a couple extra things here. All right, so moving on to the next topic, takeovers. NBA 2K25 introduces a brand new takeover system with 72 takeovers and 14 takeover abilities. Each takeover targets different attributes and has five levels ranging from level one when you are heating up to level five when you are red hot. As you excel on the court, your takeover meter fills up, gradually boosting the targeted attributes as you rise up the five levels. This, this happens automatically, so you don't need to manually activate takeover. But if you make mistakes and produce bad plays on the court, your takeover meter will drop. At level 5, you'll trigger a takeover ability that, when used effectively, can make you the most dominant player on the court for a short period of time. Initially, you will only have access to levels 1 to 3. You will unlock levels 4 and 5 each by activating its previous level 30 or level in 30 different games. Takeover level unlocks do carry over between saves. Okay. Each takeover has attribute requirements, and you'll be able to see which takeovers you have the potential to unlock within the My Player Builder, as well as how each one's associated boost will impact your attributes. You can change your takeovers at any time between games, selecting from any that you meet the attribute requirements for. Personal favorite of visual concepts is the barbecue chicken takeover. Hoop heads know that barbecue chicken means you're about to cook your defender and serve up a highlight. As your takeover meter rises, your post game becomes stronger. The takeover ability it comes with is the deep post bag, which temporarily and greatly enhances all things post from back downs to post moves and post shots. All right, um, there's definitely a lot to go over here. So first of all, 72 takeovers and 14 takeover abilities. That probably sounds like a lot to y'all when you first hear that. But how I look at this is this is just custom takeovers. Like we've been asking for a takeover 
new hall for a while it's kind of been the same for a while you know they they, they mixed in double takeover single takeover choosing what takeover you activate even this year i think a lot of people complain about the choosing what takeover you activate because you know if you have a 72 3 and you activate sharp tag like that's should you be able to do that some people thought no okay but this is literally just custom takeovers now the level one the three level one the five so to me that makes sense how i would deter how i would process that for you guys is think of your takeover meter in 2k24 and then divide it into five different little you know sections and then you will initially unlock those three and then you have to unlock the four and five by just completing a little quest and once you complete that quest, you'll have it for the whole year on all your builds. So that's a W. And it seems like the takeover definitely makes sense for the build because they said that depending on what build you make is you're only allowed a certain amount of takeover. So you're not going to have access to all 72 takeovers and all 14 takeover abilities. You're only going to have access to a fraction of that depending on what you upgrade in the builder. So if you have like a 73 pointer, you're probably not going to get any shooting takeovers that would affect like your jump shot or if you have a 40 dunk you're not gonna get no slashing takeover abilities or anything like that i'm guessing another thing is you have to select what takeover and takeover ability you have before the game and you can change it in between games because it says that and that means you can't like so you so if you have like 20 takeover options and five takeover abilities on your build you can't choose which one during the game you have to choose before the games so that, that makes sense too because it'd probably be too much of a headache to choose between 20 takeovers in during the game like that's kind of crazy and they did mention that these takeovers and takeovers abilities will give your stats certain boosts so i don't know how many that's gonna be but let's just go ahead and look at the takeover screenshot and maybe we can get more info with that so here we go oh my god this is actually giving us a lot of info we kind of get a glimpse of the customization screen here so the first thing I see is viewer takeover options at 99 overall. So this might actually be in the builder too as well. It looks like because they're saying like at 99, you get this. So I feel like this is in the builder. Uh, so that's cool. So look at all these takeovers on the left. These are in alphabetical order. So we're not seeing all of them, but this guy gives up or gets above the rim or actually some of these are grayed out. So he doesn't get above the rim, but let's just go off these takeovers. So we have above the rim ankle taker attacking barbecue chicken block party board beast break igniter brute and bucket okay this is interesting above the rim seems like maybe a rim protecting badge a dunking badge ankle taker ankle breaker takeover so people are definitely gonna be hyped about that there is an ankle breaker takeover playmaking and takeover has not been able to get ankles for a while now sharp takeover was giving them a little bit but it wasn't that good so ankle taker hey to all those guys that love breaking ankles this is great news for you hacking i'm assuming that's like a blow by slashing badge maybe barbecue chicken they talked about that's a post badge block party that has to be blocks board beast rebounding takeover break igniter that gotta be like a is that a passing badge for break starter maybe a uh, brute i have no idea bucket maybe like a shot creating or shooting kind of badge something like that uh but as we can see it also says what is a takeover at the bottom here it says your encore performance increases your takeover meter attribute boosts are applied at each level of the meter at level five the takeover ability will turn on okay okay takeover meter so like this is literally exactly what i said it was going to be so it's literally just your takeover meter or takeover meter divided into five little sections and you have to unlock those level four and level five sections through a quest and look at this so barbecue chicken is going to boost three different attributes okay this is actually fire because for example even though we knew what sharp takeover did with like shooting the ball they never actually directly told us, yo, sharp takeover is going to do a plus blank to three pointer, a plus blank to mid range and a plus blank to speed. Like we never knew any of that information. So now I was talking about earlier in the video, how they were giving us more information with the actual attribute screen. Now they're giving us even more information with the takeovers. This is what we're asking for as much information on this stuff as possible. Uh, this is great. So this gives a boost of close or close shot, post control and strength. Uh, and then look at it tells you what kind of boost it gives you through these levels. So if you're like level one, a plus two, you know, level two, plus three, level three, plus four, level four, plus six, level five, plus seven. Okay. So it even tells you how to affect it. So right here, the interesting thing to know, it says plus seven and 93 plus seven is a hundred, but it's saying 99. So I wonder if you can still go past that 99 limit because you have been in the past, but they didn't ever really actually physically show that you're past it. So I so this completely confirms that these takeovers will affect three different stats. And then the takeover ability, which they have on deep post bag, 
easier to beat defenders with post back downs moves and face shot. So what it seems like is the takeover is going to affect three attributes. And then the takeover ability is going to give you a better ability to do certain things. So how I look at it is, you know, those plus one arm sleeves are going to affect your rating, right? That you get in the season pass, for example, but they're not going to like actually give you more green animations or anything than like that. But sharp takeover, for example, like 2K18, you're making more whites. You know, you, you can do those little animations after you shoot a full bar. It's going to go in or like with post scoring takeover this year or slashing takeover this year. I mean, uh, it's going to make you like throw players out the way or spin them off your body. That's what it seems like the takeover ability is. It's going to give you like powers to do something. So like there's probably going to be some kind of shooting takeover ability that makes you shoot from deeper. It's not going to increase your rating necessarily, but it's going to make you do something extra. So deep post bag is going to make you be more powerful when you back down your defender, or it's probably going to make you, you know, get crazier spin animations or crazier drop step animations rather than actually upgrading those ratings. So that's actually super fire. So the takeover, once again, is going to affect three attributes. The takeover ability is going to affect what kind of physical things you can do on the court. That can expand your game honestly this is fire if this actually works in game correctly is this not like a really good takeover system let me know what you guys think in the comments about everything i talk about in this video i think this is really good like i actually really like this i'm excited for that ankle taker takeover i know we don't see all the takeovers here but those are the ones we can see and there's 72 of them so there's got to be some pretty crazy ones with some pretty crazy names as well. I'm trying to think if I have any worries with this. I mean, I guess the only worry you could possibly have is what is the cutoff to unlock some of these takeovers? Like, can I get ankle takeover at a 75 ball handle? Is that the cutoff? Or is it an 85? Is it a 95? Is it a 60? Like, it can't be too low. Like, if you're breaking ankles, for example, you got to be pretty good at dribbling. You got to be like a Kyrie, a Curry you know, someone like that, right? So I guess the only worry would be what is the actual rating cutoff for some of these takeovers? Because if I find out the ankle taker is at, for example, a 77 ball handle, I can make like a six, seven ISO build, get a, a one or two, three different good dribble moves. And now I have an ankle taker, like, and then I'm saving the attributes elsewhere because I know I can get ankle taker. Like that might be a little broken. So hopefully these cutoffs are good all right now we're moving on to badges there are 40 skill badges in nba 2k25 and similar to takeovers each badge has a unique attribute requirements when you are building your my player you'll be able to see which badges you have to potentially unlock these 40 badges are split across two tiers determined by your my player's height my player badges are progressed by activating each badge in games this means badges you use the most will be earned more quickly matching your playstyle on the court this progression can only increase and does not drop even if you don't fire a badge off tier one badges are the most powerful badges available to you but are more difficult to progress compared to tier two badges you can also work on your badges in the team practice facility here's a full list of the new and changed badges in nba 25. our goal was to make every badge feel valuable and equally desirable with fewer badges having a legitimate impact on the core ensure every area of basketball was complemented with useful badges so every playstyle has a ways to stand out this means there are fewer badges that activate in only very specific situations for example shifty shooter covers all off dribble shooting and set shot specialist covers all standing shooting there's also a brand new level of badges higher than hall of fame called legend legend badges have the highest attribute requirements to unlock for my player but give you a huge boost on the court okay there's a lot to go over first of all drop a like for not being able to lose your badges anymore thank you 2k thank god you can't lose your badges anymore okay that's a w uh only being two different tiers is cool uh you know they've had like multiple more than tiers than that in the past but this is just for a progression standpoint that wouldn't make you know builds any more less or more op like if you're a 6-2 you know limitless range might be easier to get than on a 6-7 but you have to reach a certain attribute regardless for those badges so that's not gonna make the builder doesn't worry me about the builder being broken or not there's 40 badges i'm guessing that's a lot less than usual because they talked about how bad is gonna have purposes there's not going to be a lot of different badges firing off on like certain things. So that's a W. Uh, and obviously they said that in the paragraph, but badges are going to have more meaning. So like each badge is going to be more, they said desirable, it's going to be more meaningful or wanted, right? So that's a good thing. 
but the hall of fame baddies before we do get into all of these specific baddies what they do what they look like and what they're called we did see in that my player builder screenshot that that uh dribbling launch badge was gotten at legend with a 94 speed with ball now once again i don't know if you can get higher than a 94 speed with ball in 2k25 i'm guessing you can but i'm really hoping for example limitless range let's let's say limitless range is in the game we're about to find out in a second but for like legend limitless range that has to be at a 99 three-pointer or if there's an ankle breaker badge and you get it on legend all these legend badges should be unlocked at 99 ratings a hundred percent in my opinion y'all let me know what ratings you think most of these legend badges should be activated at but like for a legend posterizer like that better be at 99 dunk like there's just no way it should be going lower than that legend unpluckable that better be at 99 ball handle right uh then again if we look at this builder screenshot it got legend you know lightning launch at 94 speed ball that just seems a little low to me like the legend badge at only a 94 rating I, I don't know it depends on how high of a speed ball you can get in this game handles for days is at legend and he only it had this build as a 98 ball handle i don't know maybe i'm bugging i feel like you should have a 99 ball handle to get the legend badge and the last thing i'll notice about this builder is the badge levels uh it's getting bronze glove at a 71 steel bronze interceptor as well bronze challenger at a 73 perimeter bronze dead eye 82-3 uh, what else silver posterizer for 87 dunk gold dimer for 82 pass act seems a little low i don't know but something that definitely is confirmed here is that the 98 ball handle is not good enough for legend uh unpluggable so you do have to have the so you do have to have a 99 ball handle for that but still man like that other legend badge right there that one's i just looked at it it's ankle assassin dude 98 ball handle for legend ankle assassin i don't know man I, maybe i'm bugging you guys let me know in the comments what ratings do you guys think these legend badges should be gotten at do you think they should always be the 99 do you think 97 to 99 is good do you think 94 for i mean i think 94 for that one is a little too low like okay maybe the 98s can you whatever but the 94 speed with ball for a legend badge I, dude like i don't know it for example if, if you're getting a 94 midi for legend midi magician like dude there's just no way i i don't know we'll, we'll see though we'll see anyways everything else looks pretty solid let's go ahead and just dive straight into these badges what they're called and what they do all right y'all gonna want to take out the notepads for this one so we're starting with aerial wizard uh this has been in the game we know it's in the game we know what it does you know and you put backs we alley-oops so same thing there float game this was in 2 24 Improves a player's ability to make floaters. Yep, same thing. Hook specialist. This is also in the game. Improves a player's ability to make post hooks. Layup mix, mix master. New badge. Improves a player's ability to finish fancy or acrobatic layups successfully. Okay, so this looks like it's a replacement for acrobat. So I guess this confirms acrobat is gone. Honestly, this just sounds like the same thing, just a different name for it. I'm hoping acrobat isn't as crazy because. There's a lot of acrobatic layup animations that you can kind of just cancel out of layups or cancel out of dunk meters and just go up to a layup. And I feel like those just always went in. Hopefully that's just not as crazy as it is in 2K24. Paint Prodigy improves a player's ability to quickly and efficiently score while going to work in the paint. Okay, so this is like a post score badge. Um, I don't know. This seems like it might be a, just some extra stuff for a post score that they shouldn't have. Like post scores are already op so you're telling me they just get a bat like this badge would go for everything they do if they're drop stepping this is going to help them if they're post spinning this is going to help them if they're hook shotting this is going to help them if they're just mashing in the paint this is going to help them standing dunk metering this is going to help them that, that's kind of crazy i don't know if they need a badge like this i don't know maybe i'm bugging physical finisher improves the player's ability to battle through contact and convert contact layups okay so we've seen this badge before i think it was called fearless finisher before it was called contact finisher at one point uh so yeah it just seems like another fearless finisher one post fade phenom we saw this before improves a player's ability to make post phase and hop shots that's been in the game post powerhouse new badge strengthens a player's ability and backing down defenders and moving them with drop steps okay so i guess drop stepper is gone and it's kind of being combined into like a back down punisher so i feel like this is back down punisher and drop stepper combined into one badge that's that's literally what that is okay post up poets a new badge raises the raises the chances of faking or getting by the defender as well as scoring with performing moves in the post okay i mean so is this just up and under and pump fake maestro in one I'm guessing what that that's what this is. I mean, it feels I, after reading it, it feels like this is also just going to go into or to help boost any post move. 
because when it says when performing moves in the post just scoring why i mean that's a drop step that's a post spin that's a that's a pump fake that's that's a post spin am i am i wrong so i don't know post scores just off these i mean we've we're only like seven bad is in and post scores are looking insane right now they also talked about how their favorite takeover and takeover ability was a post score one so hey post scores are always good but wow i mean they're looking insane right now <laughs> posterizer increases the chances of throwing down a dunk on your defender we've obviously seen that for years i'm glad that they kept that the same name because that's just that should never be replaced rise up we also have seen this before it's in the last year's game increases the likelihood of dunking or posterizing your opponent when standing in the paint area did i seen it before obviously jump shots taken with the defender closing out receive less of a penalty from a shot contest some of this range is back perfect extends the range from which a player can effectively shoot at three pointers from deep that's good new badge alert mini marksman elevates the likelihood of making shots over taller defenders oh no this reminds me of that badge in 2k22 if anybody remembers mismatch expert i think is what it was called basically every small guard had mismatch expert players were even making like five eights five nines five tens to make this badge even more op and basically anybody taller than you would you would just green yellows over consistently like so i'm not gonna lie this badge is probably the most interesting and could affect the game the most out of any badge on this list potentially because number one this badge could be super op um it could affect how tall people make their lockdowns it could affect how tall people make their centers uh for 3v3 courts or certain courts because for example lockdowns in 2k22 started making their locks shorter just because of mismatch expert uh not only that this will 100 percent affect how tall guards make their builds because just like in 2k22 people making five tens five eights five nines literally just to get this badge more op because yeah you could have this badge on hall of fame but dude if you're five eight it's gonna work a lot better than you if you're six one right so i'm i don't i really don't like this badge at all i don't think it should be in the game in my opinion it, i mean it is in the game right so hopefully it is not as op as it was in 2k22 because that was just out of hand another new badge set shot specialist boost chances of knocking down standstill jump shots okay so this is basically like maybe like a claymore kind of badge mixed with like catch and shoot uh potentially i don't know if catch and shoot's gone but that could be catch and shoot and claymore combined right there All right, another new badge shifty shooter okay they talked about this earlier improves a player's ability to successfully make off the dribble high difficulty jump shots okay so this is probably like agent zero uh difficult shots in the past uh what else could have this have been maybe even midi magician is gone and this is just yeah midi magician is definitely gone uh and this is just combining it so this is like a midi magician agent zero's difficult shots all in one badge okay i like that that's that's a w box out beast seen it before proves the player's ability to box out and fight for good rebounding position rebound chaser of course proves the player's ability to track down rebounds from farther distance than normal ankle assassin new badge increases the ability to break down the defender across them up okay i mean it's literally just ankle breaker just with a different name uh so that's good i think there was actually another badge in 2k24 that was like breaking down the defender it was like was it killer combos well killer combos is more like chaining moves together so maybe not but yeah ankle assassin ankle breaker w bailout we've seen it before hopefully it is not as crazy as it usually is and hopefully it is needed as well if you don't have any bailout you should be throwing that ball way out of bounds if you bail out of a shot break starter after grabbing a defense rebound deep outlet pass made up the four our most accurate passes must be made quickly after the defense rebound okay yeah, that's w dimer is back when in the half court passes by dimers to open shooters either the shot percentage boost hands for days is back a player that takes less of an energy hit when performing consecutive drill moves allowing them to chain together combos quicker for longer periods of time lightning launch is a new badge this is the one that they got on legend with a 94 speed ball speeds up launches when attacking from the perimeter okay i mean this could be good for everything if you have finishing on your build this is kind of like blow by this is kind of like speed boost this is like blow by speed booster combined strong handle new badge reduces the likelihood of being bothered by defenders when dribbling okay i like that addition that's a good badge i, I mess with that that's gonna be huge for small guard unpluckable is back defenders have a tougher time poking the ball free with their steal attempts okay we'll see about that versatile visionary new badge alert improves ability 
to thread and fit passes, including alley-oops quickly and on time. Okay, so basically needle threader. Challenger back again, approves the effectiveness of well-time contests against the perimeter shooters. A lot of people have a mixed conception of what Challenger did too. Like Challenger is not going to give you a better contest. Uh, it is going to take the contest you would have got and just make it harder to green. So a 20% contested jump shot with bronze challenger is going to be easier to green than a 20% contested jump shot with hall of fame challenger right so that's just to clear things up because a lot of people just don't know how that badge works love is back increase the ability to successfully steal from all the ball defenders or strip layup attempts okay hopefully uh that is not as op as it was last year uh i think the plucks were a little out i think there just needs to be better ways to steal the ball than just standing in front of them and clicking a button right like there should be better they said there was cutoff animations so hopefully there's just more steel animations with those animations rather than just a pluck right in you know in front of them to the point where they can't even do a dribble move high flying denier new badge alert boost the speed and leaping ability of a defensive player in anticipation of a block attempt okay i like this so this is like chase down artists and anchor but not really anchor all in one so this seems like you can chase down a defender but also it seems like if you're on like the right block and someone's on the left block you got a seven foot build you can kind of leap over there and get that block i like this batch i like what they did with that okay that's fire immovable enforcer is back in prison defensive players abilities improves the defensive players strengths while defending ball handlers and finishers who are coming straight at them interceptor is back the frequency of successfully tipped or intercepted passes greatly increases off ball pass is back makes players more difficult to get past when playing off ball as they can grab and hold their matchup on ball menace ha a new badge hounds and bodies up while defending on the perimeter okay i swear we had some kind of menace badge in 2k23 i don't remember exactly what it was called this seems pretty similar uh this is a i like this badge this is good this is maybe like a 94 feet combined with that old menace badge and to kind of one okay i like that a paint patroller increases a player's ability to block and contest shots at the rim okay so that's a new badge so that's anchor that's literally the replacement for anchor so anchor is gone and it's called paint patroller now dodger improves a player's ability to navigate through and around screens while on defense it's back same thing post lockdown is also back strains the player's ability to effectively defend moves in the post while an increased chance of stripping the opponent Okay. Brick wall is back, increases the effectiveness of screens and drains energy from opponents on physical contact. Slippery off ball is back when attempting to get open off screens, the player more effectively navigates through traffic. And pogo stick is back, allows the players to quickly recover and go back up another jump upon landing. This could be after a rebound, block attempt, or even a jump shot. Okay, so now here's a full screenshot of all the badges. Let me know your favorite new badge and your favorite new or your favorite returning badge and maybe also a badge that is gone that you will miss or that you're glad is gone in the comments honestly uh nothing really worries me here except for literally mini marksman that badge might completely change this game upside down uh very worried about that other than that none of these badges really seem like too op i mean obviously post scores have a lot of badges it seems like going back to that lightning launch badge that might be the uh speed booster badge because they did not mention anything else about a speed booster or quick chain kind of drill moves all into one that so uh, going back to ankle assassin and lightning launch lightning launch is definitely speed booster and uh blow by in one and then ankle assassin is definitely like a quick chain or a killer combos and ankle breaker into one in my opinion but yeah those are the badges make honestly take a screenshot of this make sure you remember what these badges are called what these badges logos look like so it's just less confusing when you load up 2k25 for the first time and you see all these badges and you don't know what they mean right so anyways make sure to drop a like so screenshot this subscribe to the channel let's move on all right now we're moving on to badge perks there are three new badges that can modify progression of individual badges each perk has two slots available to unlock one for tier one badges and another for tier two badges max plus one boost a badge one level above its max potential you must progress a badge to its max potential before equipping this perk there are unlocked they're unlocked at level 15 tier 2 badge and level 30 tier 1 badge in each season at the end of season your badge is equipped with max plus one will revert to the original level okay participation that is equipped with this perk will earn a flat base amount of progression each game regardless of how many times they are activated awesome synergy badges equipped with this perk will receive a progression when your teammates earn progression using the same badge all right so this is actually really interesting stuff so before we go into that max plus one stuff 
the participation in the synergy i kind of just different versions honestly way better versions than some of those badge perks or performance multipliers were in 2k24 at each season where like winner circle for example your badges would go up more after a win or whatever but let's talk about this max plus one so you have to level up in the season to eventually unlock this i'm not gonna lie personally i've never cared about season levels I've never cared to look at my season level. I've never cared to get to a certain level to unlock a certain reward. I've never cared to even claim these rewards and they've been out for three years and I have not really cared about any of them. But this right here is going to actually make me care about levels. I never thought they could do it. I never thought they could make me care about levels, but this is definitely going to make me make sure I get to that level 15, that level 30 every season. Now, obviously, you can't stack these. So if you get to level 30 in season one and you get to level 30 in season two, you're not gonna have two bass or badge boost levels. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna reset after each season. So that's why it's important that you wanna keep leveling up if every season to make sure you keep that badge boost level, especially if you made a build in a builder based off knowing that badge boost so this is super fire though so let's say you made like a 6-6 six, six in 2k24 let's just give a good example that you guys would be familiar with six sixes could go to like a 92 3 uh depending on what you put your wingspan at so that would give you silver limitless so if you get this badge boost thing this is going to raise your badge level above its max potential but just one level above it so at level 15, you can upgrade a tier two badge. So these are going to be badges that are not as important. So if you make like a 6-2 play shot, uh, I don't know. There's going to be a badge that's just not as important to you. Maybe like it's like maybe you have like bronze interceptor because you put a steel up. And now it can go to silver or something. At level 30, though, with a tier one badge, if you made a 6-2 play shot, okay, now you're talking like the limitless range, you know, badges that are more important to you. But let's say you make like a 92 three-pointer 6-6 six, six build, right? And limitless range is like a tier one badge right and you get to level 30 and limitless range on a silver you can get it to gold this is going to completely change how you make your build in 2k25 and this is definitely something that you're going to want to take note of because if you know you're going to reach level 15 level 30 then you're going to want to know that when you're making your build because let's say you really want gold limitless range and you can only get gold limitless range at 6.5 or 6.4 if you know you're going to get to level 30, go taller because you know you're going to get that gold limitless range if you put your plus one on it. That's as long as you're getting to that level 30 every season. So honestly, I love it. I love this edition. I think this is fire. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I don't think this is I don't even have any worries for this. You know, usually I'd worry. Oh, maybe this is too OP for builds. But like, dude, it's resets every season you have to get the level 30 every season it's one badge it doesn't seem like it's going to be anything crazy i think it, and everyone's going to have access to it if you get to level 30 or 15 so i think this is a good addition and honestly this is something we've been asking for for a minute bro like for example top 10 in 2k24 you you got all these extra like uh attributes and they didn't affect anything they didn't affect your badges they didn't affect your stats or, or like your your animations i mean so yeah, this is a W. All right, moving on to performance multipliers. Maximize your badges in NBA 2K25 by taking advantage of performance multipliers. These in-game boosts could take your game to another level, but you'll need to learn them separate separately via quests. These are, or there are three performance multipliers in total. Up for the challenge, games played against the tough opponents boost badge progression for all badges, okay? Grade A student finishing games with A, okay, okay. So like your grade's gonna increase your progression. Winner circles back, okay? So yeah, this is, um as you complete in different games types, you'll experience different versions of performance mode based on the format. Okay, so this is literally just what we were talking about earlier. Uh, this is basically like badge perks, but like just a dumber down version. We saw this, these performance multipliers in 2K24, they're back. It's a W, uh, makes grinding badges easier, especially now since you can't lose your badges. This is even better. So great addition to bring back. Badge elevators. New in NBA 2K25, badge elevators can permanently boost an individual badge of your choice up to three levels within its max potential. For example, if your badge is currently at bronze, but has a max potential of legend, it can immediately be boosted up to three levels from bronze to silver to gold to hall of fame. These will be available to unlock throughout the year from season levels, rewards, badge elevators earned in season one to four can boost your badges up to two levels and those earned in season five can boost your 
okay okay so the first four seasons it only up two levels five to eight three levels okay so a lot of people are gonna immediately react to this completely wrong uh this is not like one of those things where like oh you have a 93 pointer and that only gives you bronze limitless now you can get legend limitless because it's gonna go off three levels. that's not how that works so this is basically floor setters but a better better version of floor setters so let's say you make a 60 overall right obviously his max potential is going to be a 99 so let's say you made a 6-2 with a 94-3 or a 92 three-pointer he unlocks silver limitless but you have no vc to upgrade him so you're a 60 overall so you can get to 92-3 you just don't have it at 92-3 which means you can get limitless range on silver but you can't get there yet because you don't have the vc to get there yet basically what this is going to do is it's just going to give you the badge before you get the attribute. So this is this is cool. This is basically just making it easier to progress your builds. So it's, this is not going to make your builds more OP. This is just going to make your builds easier to progress. So if your build, so if you're playing against builds that aren't maxed out or you're on a build that's not maxed out, you could have a badge that would only be gotten if your build was maxed out. So let me know if y'all have any questions about that just let me know in the comments but yeah this isn't something that's going to make your build better it's just going to make your build better in terms of you haven't upgraded this stat yet that you would get that badge at you're going to get it earlier so it's just making it easier to grind your build simple as that not only that it could even be worked in a whole nother stance so let's say you get on 2k25 so let's say you make a new build in season two right and you upgraded immediately to 90 overall or whatever or 90 let's say you immediately upgraded to 99 overall right you still have to earn those badges so you can just this is like i said it's a floor setter regardless of your what your attitude rating is so you could just put limitless range on max immediately right so yeah it's basically basically just completely dumb it down it is four setters but without actually needing the attribute rating yet that's that's literally what it is cap breakers last but not least we are excited to introduce cap breakers in nba 2k25 we saw community feedback that players wanted a way to not only increase attribute ratings above their max potential caps set at a build creation but also have those ratings contribute towards animations badge and takeover attribute requirements that's exactly what cap breakers do for example let's say your ball handle attribute is maxed out in the 85 you can apply two cap breakers to play with an 87 ball handle rating and also unlock access to say any animations badges or takeovers that require an 87 ball handle there's a few restrictions to ensure a balanced gameplay experience each attribute can be increased at a maximum of plus five above its cap you can use a cap breaker on an attribute above its max potential rating allowed by your build's height weight wingspan which is shown in the my player builder while allocating your attribute potential you must progress an attribute to its max potential rating before applying a cap breaker there are a total of 15 cap breakers available to earn towards more on relations in the city in a few weeks okay so immediately there's a lot to talk about here and i know a lot of people are going to be confused about this so let me explain this. so first of all there's more than just levels y'all heard it in that last couple sentences that's back affiliations are back i mean so that's good news that the, the, that three letter three letter word that i'm not going to say because for whatever reason people get demonetized when they say that word that is back that's a huge w okay but this cap breaker thing is also a w so let me give you an example on how this is going to work so you can increase each cap by five right and you can get up to 15 so they're probably gonna give you like th five at starter two for example if it's the same as this year or like plus five at veteran two like something like that they'll just like spread them out right but let's say you want to upgrade your three-pointer right you want to increase the maximum of your three-pointer you can't just put all 15 on your three-pointer right you can't go from a 77 to a 92 three you only do plus five for each attribute so that's w so you can't go past plus five so that's definitely gonna make it more balanced but not only that you can go past its max potential rating so so we're on 2k24 right now let's give an example here so this is a 6-6 build this build sucks by the way um, i just threw some attributes in but my max potential rating is a 92 three-pointer with this build based off my height weight and wingspan and position so i can't make this build and then put a five cap plus five cap on my three-pointer get 97 three-pointer and get all the badges that come along with it and takeovers that come along that's not how it works so once again you can't go past your max potential build attributes this is the max potential three-pointer i can get on this build i cannot go past 92 three-pointer even with these cap breakers now what i can do is i can knowingly knowing that i'll put a plus five on my three-pointer with these cap breakers and get to that level to unlock those cap breakers 
I can save attribute points on this build, go to an 87 three-pointer, knowing that I'm going to put the plus five to get the 92 three-pointer to get all these badges, takeovers that I'm going to get anyways, right? And then I can save those attribute points to put somewhere else. So this is going to be a huge W if you're someone that knows you're going to get to that level, someone that knows that you're going to unlock these cap breakers, you're going to be able to make a build knowing this information, save it, which is going to save you attribute points and make your build way better. So for example, let's say I'm making a 6-6 build. Obviously, this is the 2K24 build that we're looking at right here. Let's say I'm making a 6-6 build and I have all plus 15 cap you know, attributes unlocked and I'm going to spread them around. If I were being smart here, I would think of the most expensive attributes. So three pointers probably going to be super expensive. Driving dunk is probably going to be super expensive. And so is ball handle. So let's just max out a build really quick. All right. So I just upgraded like a random six, six build. This is just super random, right? Uh, I don't even know if I have a build specifically like this, but I just upgraded a six, six build, right? 94 dunk is good. 92 three is good. 86 ball handle is good. 91 seals good, right? So let's just go with it. So let's pretend like this was the build I had in 2K25. And now I want to make a build knowing or a build like this, knowing that I'm going to get these plus 15 cap attributes. So if I was smart, like I said, I would take away some of these stats from the most expensive stats, right? So three pointer is pretty expensive. I have a plus 15 cap. I know I'd put a plus five on three pointer so I could go less on the three pointer while affecting the mid range as well. Now I say, now look at, I went from a 99 to a 97 off that. I can also do it on the dunk or some of these stats that go along with it. I can, uh, by the way, I don't know how this is going to work with vertical being enhanced with driving. I, you still have to have the vertical. So yeah, I wouldn't change the vertical because you need those dunk packages, right? But then for my last five, honestly, I would have put it on ball handle if this was higher, but screw it. We'll just put it on steel and look it just like that. I have saved five overalls to put elsewhere. So now maybe I want a higher ball handle. Maybe I want a super high pass act, right? Be I want, you know, a, a higher Excel or maybe now I want a higher perimeter or, you know, a, a mid range shot. You, you get the point, right? So you can make your build way better by unlocking these at those certain rewards so this is super fire that's how it's going to work so another breakdown you can't go past your limits on your build so once again this builds max potential 92 three-pointer even with the cab breaker can't go past that not only that but when you actually do make this build you have to have the actual attribute completely maxed with the vc spent into it to even you know put the cap breaker on so what for example like let's say i made this build right um and i maxed out the the steel to or I could get my steel to an 86, but I only have it upgraded to 81 right now. I can't put the cap breaker on until I max it out. You can only put a max of plus five on a certain attribute, right? And then you get up to 15 if you reach the max rewards of the game, right? So that's super fire. Great addition by 2K. That's a complete breakdown of how the cap breakers will work, will work for the, my grinders out there. Uh, this is this is a huge W for us, man. Now we're getting into some of the my career stuff. If you are a my career player, I'm not going to go into a complete dive into this information. We've already been doing this video for a minute, but I will show up some screenshots that you can pause, read over. There are my career cutscenes back. There's a my career storyline back. Um, just a little breakdown they uh instead of competing against i think this year it was like oh try to reach the goat status so you're passing certain players now you're trying to pass certain teams and duos so you're trying to become better than the showtime lakers the big three celtics you can also play flashback games um from like fiba games high school games so high school is going to be back in my career and there if and based off these flashback games, you're going to be able to earn um, my points accelerator just like I think you couldn't. I think it was 23. You could do that. Maybe it was 22. There's going to be dynasty rankings. Try to reach that number one spot competing against like those old duos like the Michael Jordan Bulls with Pippen and stuff like that. They improved key games. You guys can read over this. Like I said, pause at any point. Personally, I'm just not an offline micro player. So I can't really dive deep into this kind of stuff because I don't really play it. They also had some closing remarks. 
on the my career stuff so again pause read it over uh here's also some screenshots from 2k25 my career so here's like the dynasty badges this isn't used online by the way this is just my career uh dynasty list so once again like you're competing against the jordan bulls they have a certain amount of dynasty points you need to reach or surpass those dynasty points to pass them on the old time list and then here's like my career personal goals along with the key games menu and yeah i mean guys i know i went over a lot this video i would highly recommend watching the entire video it was just packed with information a lot of stuff you are going to want to know when lo loading up 2k25 for the first time especially making your build let me know all of your guys's opinions in the comments below i'm going to be reading a lot of comments i want your guys's opinions also make sure to follow me on twitter i'm going to be tweeting about all of this information we can probably discuss it a lot more on there as well so follow my twitter drop a like on this video if you liked this helpful information and make sure you're subscribed i mean guys i just gave you 2k25 early info on the dot of its release a month in advance we're going to have a lot of news here on this channel a lot of early stuff on this channel all related to 2k25 so you're gonna want to make sure you're subscribed with noties on we're so close to that 900k too let's get to that 900k anyways it's been your boy henry aka double h and i'm out of here y'all peace